Hi there! Welcome to the Yard Chicks podcast. This is a very, very special episode because I'm not in my own home. <laughs> We're still out and about after Edinburgh. I'm in Glasgow and um, my husband is having a snooze, so I thought I just <laughs> I decided I'll podcast. So I've got my coffee. I have my knitting notes. I have my cat hair and my nice new dress. <laughs> so off we go. Welcome to the Yarn Chick Podcast. the other camera just went batteries and it's charging and that's the one that has autofocus which I want to use to show you what the things I bought. I didn't buy much because I was on a budget for real. I spent money I don't have which is sickening and silly and stupid and crazy but necessary. <laughs> things so I'm gonna show them and I'm gonna be honest about not actually having the money to do what I did so cheers to that okay I knitted three Edinburgh Yarn Festival sweaters number one was finished and knitted since November, so finished in February, so it was quite some time in the making because it was on three millimeters, proud as a baguette about this one. Okay, we're gonna have a lot of this shifty shifty stuff, sorry. I'm not gonna, uh, uh, oh, yeah, I'm not gonna keep apologizing either, I'm gonna just do it. So, here is my Renfana sweater. Look at it. Oh, my word, so no popcorns on the sleeve, popcorns on the body, on the back, cropped with this dress and the pockets. I'm in love, I love the sweater. It is a design by Karin Westrand, who is the Knitting Almanac and one of the Westrand sisters, and I love her work so much so that I knitted two of her designs for Edinburgh, hoping I would see her there, but obviously I didn't double check and she wasn't there. So I couldn't show anyone this apart from myself and my friends. <laughs> um, but I could show my second Edinburgh Yarn Festival sweater to the Wool Kitchen. Because this is a design as well from Karen Restrand and this one was knitted in Silke Tweed by Magazine Duet, sorry, nah, it's very important, to citate who does what. And I knitted this in the sort of crazy build up to the festival, I knitted the Eve's cardigan. And you, if you watched episode 14, yeah, you've watched it, you know what happened with this one. If you haven't, go back. It was a bit manic because I had knitted the back way too short, so it was sort of up here. 
and it looked like a what we call a bomber jacket you know one of those jackets that's short at the back and long at the front you put your hands in the pocket and you're like quite tough I didn't want to look tough in my rainbow pony eaves little pony I call it my little pony eaves because it looks like my little pony in this amazing the wool kitchen I'm gonna stick it on it is the wool kitchen um, iron weight in the champagne supernova colorway which I absolutely love um, you will have seen me podcast about this yarn several times because I've knitted a popcorn rest for my daughter and I wanted to knit the Renfan in this but as you can tell the iron weight is much thicker than the circuit tweed that you were meant to use for the pattern of the Renfana. Then, come autumn, um, the East Cardigan pattern was released, which has a contrast colour, and usually you would um, not cast off here, but uh, carry on knitting the sleeve in the same colour as the body, and therefore have a cardigan. That's why it's called the, Re the Eve's cardigan. I will do that, but I'll do that in autumn. I'll wear it as a vest um, during summer, and then when it gets cold, I will add the sleeves. We can do that. We're knitters. We can wear things and change things, and we can just frog this bit and join yarn, and we can do those things, which is exciting. So I am mega happy with this. I knitted the smallest size because this is iron weight, and in the original, you were meant to use a DK. So I just used everything, all the stitch count, everything for the smallest version. And because I bought this yarn of the Wool Kitchen at Edinburgh Yarn Festival last year, and it didn't seem to be enough for a whole sweater quantity, I bought the yellow by the little grey sheep, Emma. Um, it's a Stein Fine wool and it's a four ply, so it's a bit thinner and I used it double. The colourway is called Utterly Butterly, well obviously. So I loved having these, you know, this, this, this pocket with that contrast, it's perfect, it goes so well. It goes so well with everything that I am super pleased I did what I did, which was I stuck to my guns, I frogged back and redid the whole shoulder shaping. I added the rows that I'd left out at the back. I had to cut several times because I was, you know, I had darned in some ends already and it was a freaking, it was a nightmare. It was, it was proper work to go back. But now I'm like, yes, I made sure I finished it all right. And I would not have been able to finish it without my friends because Sanity is an important part of the luggage when you go to a festival. You've got to stay sort of stable. <laughs> you can't go crazy it's like, I've got that so many ends, I can't deal with it anymore. Luckily I had friends to come and save me and my sanity. And that was Louisa, who is Knitted Dukas on Instagram. So lovely to finally see you in person. And Lika, who is Lika Knitting on Instagram. They both darned in about four or five, maybe six ends each because I'd cut, I had trezillion more ends than the original pattern and cut and joined and done all of that business. And I was like, oh my dear, this was too much work. And I returned to the table and they're like, we've both done a couple of, we've both done, done them. it was really kind of them. I was so chuffed because I got to wear this on the second day of Edinburgh Yarn Festival and show it to the wool kitchen and go, look at me, I got a new vest. And the wool kitchen took a picture. Helen was chuffed as well to see me and I was proud as you can be. Um, that was, okay, so the finishing actually happened during the big knit night. We had managed to score tickets for the big knit night, which was on Thursday night, and that was in the marquee at the back of the festival. So, I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the festival. So, 
get your coffee ready because it's going to be a long story before I introduce the last um, sweater or during that. Sorry, I'm a very, I'm a bit confused. That's okay. The festival was in a venue called the Corn Exchange and the Corn Exchange Apparently, I think the person I was staying with in the Airbnb said it was called the Chesa. So I was at the Chesa. And it, I'm not sure if that's true because I've never heard that before, but I like that, the Chesa. We went to the Chesa. <laughs> and it is basically a, a huge, huge venue. It's got a pub at the front and at the very back there's a football training pitch and obviously a club because there's there were footballers playing and training all the time and kids and shouting and I, I love that. It made me feel right at home, a lot of loud kids. Um, and there was, when you walked in, you had what was called the Concord. So there were a couple of exhibitors on the Concord. They always secure like a big name. This time it was uh, Stephen and Penelope from Amsterdam with Stephen West sort of welcoming everyone and sharing out, I think his staff were sharing out these little ribbons saying award, style award or something and you know you'd see people walking around really proudly with their Stephen West shawls with this sort of style award ribbon. I didn't take a picture of anyone with it but I wish I had because I just loved these you know the sort of smiles and proud happinesses to have been to Stephen West's store well even opinion or piece, and to have received the ribbon of honour and pride is important and I loved how that was sort of supported or yeah how it was rewarded I liked the ribbons I didn't get one but I also didn't have a Stephen West project with me maybe I could have had it with my rainbow vest Anyway, time was short because I was working in the marketplace. So that was to the right um, of this concourse, which also had a long bar with people continuously queuing for coffee because they only had two of those steamy thingy bobs and uh, hundreds of people needing coffee. So there you go. Lots of queuing happened in the concourse as well. And to the right of the concourse was the marketplace, and on stall J1 was Heima Wolf, and she shared with Rauberg. So there was two um, women with their German wools, and Eula dyes with plant dyes and makes amazing wool. I knit with her stuff all the time. She's a friend. I admire her and her work and her super work horseness. She is busy all the time, and she had dyed up a storm for the festival. So hats off invisible hats off to this amazing woman powerfrau we would say in german she's she's a storm and it was brilliant working for her she shared with christina who was selling her bavarian merino rauwerk it's a project that is really really interesting at the core of it is actually a fork of sheep whose wool would have gone to waste had christina not decided to spin it into wool so that's that's admirable and the wool is nice as well i'm going to introduce my third eyf sweater before the camera is going to carry the plane up which is knit in our wool this is the nook sweater and i knitted it in three skeins of the Rauwerk wool um, different shades of natural grays and i've added because i've done this thing um on the sleeve where I have actually cast off with a darker shade of grey. I did the same when I cast off at the bottom. I cast off with a darker shade of grey which is actually uh, the, I think it's called Charcoal by Shelter which I used for the bracket hat back one episode you'll see the bracket hat. Um, and I still had some left so I used that for casting off to have that same visual line it's an end line. This is the end. Oh, the end. Marked by a cast off in a different color. I love this. I fell asleep in this the first night. So I arrived Wednesday night, went out dancing. <gasps> Lika and Louisa had, well, mainly Louisa, because she's the music woman. She's got the taste of tastes 
had organized tickets for the junkyard uh, band. Uh, another power frau, but on stage, that woman was amazing. I'm so, 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 so gonna check if they're gonna come to Berlin. I fell asleep in this afterwards because I was cold and I woke up smelling of sheep and happy and sheepy good. This nook top is a design by Jonna Hietala, who is one of the publishers of Leine magazine. And this was the sort of photograph on the front of their very first publication, Leine issue number one. Tip top. And Jonna, I love this. The exciting thing was, I was wearing this on the first day because I was on the Raue K Mama Wolf stool, so obviously I was wearing this together with my Ziri, which I knitted in Hey Mama Wolf wool, proud as crackers. I'm gonna say crackers because otherwise I'm gonna say that other word soon. And Yana came around and she had knitted her festival sweater, Anouk. So we're both there going in Anouk's, woo, we're the Anouk sisters. <laughs> And I loved meeting Jonna again. We met before at Berlin Knits, um, where I bought the wool for the Rentmana, because Zini and Jonna were teaching the uh, photography class that I attended together with Yvonne Papil. Papil, you were extremely missed. Mm, wish you could have come, but next year you're coming. Um, uh, sorry, tangent, tangent. Uh, so I met Jonna properly and Zini as well and I was so, so, so pleased to see them both at the Raue again, Hey Mama Wolf stand and chatting with them. I was especially proud because there was the two nooks and we had this sort of great conversation about everything and anything and their work and Rosa Puma and uh, I don't know, just, just a beautiful meetup and so pleased to also see them purchase some of the Hey Mama Wolf yarns and some of the Rauwerk yarns. So we're always like, mm, someone came and bought something. <laughs> so Nook was my third. I can't put that on. I'd sweat to bits. But you see, I've got these three sweaters. Three, who else has done that? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just proud as a cracker. <laughs> cut, cut. <laughs> to the yarn acquisitions and plan making I'm gonna have to change cameras um, so before I wanted to say what did I want to say before I change cameras I wanted to say a huge huge thank you because I was gifted so many little treats and bits and bobs and people's time and I think the festival is actually like any festival entirely worth every minute because of the people you see and the connections that you might already have from before from the internet from Instagram Ravelry YouTube <laughs> You know, all those links exist and they do hop into real life. So I think, um, as a disclaimer to all the money <laughs> that you'll see I've spent, and I have not spent as much as I would have if I'd had sufficient funds. I walked past a couple of things or put them back or didn't buy sweater quantities where I needed them for test nets or whatnot. <laughs> Anyway, what I'm trying to say is you're going to see a list of what I'd planned to buy and then I'm going to show the purchases and then I'm going to show the list again so that you can maybe understand the sort of way I worked through the festival as well as me showing the little treats, little bits and bobs that I was generously gifted from friends and 
that I love so much. So we're gonna have a big thing. And I know that some people hate that because obviously if you don't go and you don't have the stuff, then you know, ah, not my part. It's that great big envious thing. And that's fair enough. So consider it a short episode. You've seen me chatterbox away. You've seen stuff. So I don't know. You're free to come and go, as always. I've also brought my tarot cards, so there will be a tarot card at the end. And, obviously, skip to the end. I'm going to add in, like, in big blinking numbers where the knit reportage ends. Shall you not be interested in my acquisitions? Go here. Um, knit reportage is me filming the stalls that I love, um, having a wonder, catching some vibes. I filmed at the knit night, I filmed in my breaks, I filmed in the podcast lunch? Maybe not. SARS didn't. Maybe not. Too many big names, you don't want to wave a camera in their face. <laughs> um, I, I basically sort of gathered material on camera that happen, sites to be seen, places to be visited, things I saw. So the knit reportage is always at the very end. Maybe the tarot card will happen before or thereafter. Have fun. And now I'm going to change to the camera that does the autofocus. See you in a bit. So, different camera, different thing, but anyway, it helps me because this camera does the autofocus and I will share what I have in this book, which is, at the very end, my, this was my um, plan for the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. You will see at the top there's the Jamare sweater and that's ticked. There's the Michelada that that's ticked. There's the dotted rays, it has a tick. There's all the tools I wanted to get apart from needles. Whatever is in the boxes like this, I did not buy. Didn't buy it. these three sweater quantities. Or that one down there. But I bought some bits and bobs and I will show them and there's a last tick. So, I'm going to go through them from the top to the bottom because that was how I'd sort of planned. I'd, I'd gone through my Pom Pom magazine back issues, well, those that I have, um, and I had decided and calculated what would be clever to buy. So, I bought these three schemes of John Arban textile for the Jamboree sweater from the birthday um, edition. I think it's issue number 21 um, of Pom Pom. The design is by Francesca Hughes called Jamboree and it is a lovely summer top that is knitted in three colours. And like I said, I was on a bit of a budget and so I pre-calculated sweater quantities and what would make sense to buy. As in how much it will end up costing and that it should definitely be under £50, which is a lot of money. That's almost €60. Euros. People will shake their heads about it, but that's a cheap way. It's a cheap sweater quantity. I paid around because I bought another one of these so I bought four of these I'll show that later and um, all four of them together were 40 pounds so there are 10 each so this sweater jamboree sweater I will just uh, when I get home film a close-up of the pom pom mag um, so that you can see a picture of that now and because of this 
incredible design by Francesca. Thank you for this. It's, it's, it's crazy good because it's got the holes and I think this is not such a thick yarn. You actually end up not using up so much. Or basically, you, do, you don't pay a fortune. Ha! Huh. Holes in the sweater. It's good. Air. <laughs> I got to chat to Francesca, which was amazing because we both share a dear friend, Emily of um, Viola Yarns and um, Viola and the Moon. Um, so that was lovely to meet, um, finally chat. And I was like, your sweater is, oh yeah, this is on my to knit list. This is on this list. Look, you're there right at the top. And then we were, uh, she's right at the bottom as well with a clementine shawl. So there's two designs by Francesca and the clementine shawl is a single Ravelry pattern that she designed especially for John Arben and it's called clementine, sorry for this funny angle, because this is the main color of the shawl. And um, there is a second color, but I'm gonna try and use the leftovers from the sweater to add on. So there might be two or three colors in the lace border of this Clementine shawl. And that's what Francesca and I worked out. We actually had a nice chat because she was working for Yak and it was quiet when I walked past. <laughs> we got to actually connect and chat and that was really good. Help me plan this purchase, 40 pounds spent. Um, this color is the um, original main color in the sweater, Jamboree. And these two are white. You're like, you need two contrast colors. I'm gonna dye these two contrast colors because sadly they didn't have the right red or the right green that I want. I want a red like that and a green like that. So see the cacti up there? That's the green I want. You see that lighter apple up there? That's the red I want. I want rich red, I want rich green together with this uh, sea foam colorway. So that will be a process to add color to these. Um, that was not actually my first um, purchase. Uh, um, the Clementine has been in my queue for ages. It's number 13 in my Ravelry queue, so lucky number 13. It was really good to consider. Yeah, you know, another 10 pounds spent and that shawl can hop from queue to, yeah, let's cast it on. Um, the first purchase I actually made was a purchase that I didn't make um, in 2017. So this time I went to the Blue Moon store. She was sharing with someone, I'm very sorry, I forgot who you are because my focus was on Blue Moon. <laughs> it's... Uh, it's Blue Moon is Lindsay actually. I got to meet her and I got to chat and I got to introduce her to Eula as well, which I love because she's an indigo dyeing specialist. She is amazing, Lindsay. I had such fun chatting to Lindsay and I chose actually quite sillily something that is not dyed. This is the Mars base. So that is 60% uh, Merino. 20% silk, 20% yak. Oh, look at that shine. It's softer than soft, and I love this natural shade. Again, another shawl. So, um, the Summer Ring Shawl was published in Taproot and has been on my to knit wish list. I'd actually planned it for the Blacker Pod Car, but something else happened for that because the yarn I bought wasn't equivalent to what I wanted, this is much more what I want. It's gonna be the best shawl. Oh, look at these Mars Silk Yuck Beauties. They'll have such a lovely drape. And so that was the first purchase. And when I talk about Indio Indigo Art by Lindsay, I've got to show you this. These are the most artful things you can buy at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Sorry, there's lots of artful things, but I was craving this for a year, so believe you me, I'm going to say it's the best thing. <laughs> Look at this. So Lindsay actually cuts up these squares. They're all wool blankets and uh, shapes them in all sorts of different ways and stitches them or folds them and then dyes them with indigo. Here in the square you can see um, her 
um, name, her logo, and whatnot, and this just sang to me. Luckily, I was one of the first at the store, so I had a great choice. I just looked all, at all the different squares, and this one was the one I chose because I love the random squares. It's absolutely beautiful, and I'm hoping to make a project bag. I think it's going to be a lined project bag if I manage to get over my sewing fears. Lindsay, thank you for your art, your hands, craft, your magic. Thank you. I love this. So not far from them, actually, Direct Neighbours was my um, sweater purchase. It is again from a back issue of Pom Pom Magazine and it is the summer issue that I have already knit the Greco top from twice and this will be the Michelada. I mean, judging by the colour, you know it's going to be relatively close to the original. The Travel Knitter! Look, she is so talented with these deep, deep colours and to be honest, I bought more natural colours and more natural wool and plant type stuff and you will see in all my yarn trying posts, you'll see, but I need zingy, zangy, deep colours sometimes and the Michelada in this, it will be, God, I've got to show you again, oh, sorry for the fluff. It's pornography. <laughs> it's so sexy, this colour. And we did this whole, like, took a picture of me holding it up in my hair and, you know, that whole thing, that sort of silly style stuff. I knew I wanted this all along, but you sort of do it because you're just like, am I in doubt? Never once was I in doubt, especially because I had seen Louisa the day before and she was wearing the green Michelada. She knitted it from the Travel Knitter um, Twisted Sock Yarn, which is exactly what this is, using a very dark green and I'm using this super red hard, uh, red, <laughs> this super red, called Queen of Hearts. And they're hand dyed. I found out that she can only dye four skeins like this in one batch and I got to choose, choose three of the same batch and someone else was trying to snatch one off me. I was like, mm, I'm going to choose first. I bought these. <laughs> so that is what I bought from the Travel Knitter for the Michelada. I need to store them a bit more because I want to go out for lunch. And I also bought these super practical travel knitter, travel kits with stitch markers, stitch markers and a darning needle, you know, perfect. Um, I, my boss also wanted one and that was another thing that I'd craved for for a year because I'm a toot. I don't buy the things that I look at and like, especially I didn't last year, I was again on a budget bought some stuff like this yarn and the pattern but in the end stayed under budget this time I went over budget because I literally had no budget ha huh. you know it's not hard to budge from that which brings me to the best thing that's happened to me if you don't have a budget you swap and I love swaps guys I've set up a swap for my gnomes I don't think anybody wants my knitted gnomes so or I'm gonna just put them on Etsy or something. Anyway, what I'm saying is Swapalicious. This is a Swapalicious sock plank. Oh my word. I'm, I told you I'm into color and I told you I love plant dye colors. This is from the magic, magic, super magic hands of Mariah from the, um, sorry, from the Ninja Chickens podcast. She started podcasting um, a bit more than a year ago as well, so crazily around the same time. I think I started in November, she started in December, and I have watched hers and watched hers go boom, explode in size, and watched her dye art all along because she actually dyes yarn. She has done so for a long, long time before she started podcasting, but she also has been podcasting a lot about the sock blanks and her natural, these eco print 
dyes that she does and the process and the projects and the amazing drying rack of her um, husband built and her kids and her homestead and I love your podcast Mariah, I absolutely love it. So it, it was a surprise that she said, yeah, yeah, let's have a swap, let's do the swap. So we swapped Zine for Blanket. I was a bit, I felt cheeky doing that because this blanket is so amazing and her hands just create magic. Um, it was amazing though to swap and it was amazing to see Mariah and hug her and chat and have that sparkle of mummies away from home and you know that's the whole excitement of the festival and the swap. Magic! I absolutely love this. And this will become the dotted rays. So that's one thing uh, off my list. I didn't have to buy anything for the shawl that I put on my purchasing list. The pattern that I want to knit. I swapped for it. Ah, swapping is the best! So, that was a lot of purchases. Oh yeah, swapping. So the mini zine she got alongside the most recent zine, the um, Young Chicks number three. That's what we swapped and I gave one out one of these. Um, th this was an Edinburgh special. It's basically the same mini zine as you get with uh, the Young Chicks um, zine number one. Um, I reprinted the cover and I added color pictures and center and for the cover. That's all it is. So if you have the first one, you would have this amazing pingazine. I loved, I, I gave some out a bit like a business card and also as a sort of swapsy with Mariah, I added that into the zine because I felt a bit bad because the blanket is obviously worth a little bit more. But who knows, maybe I'll make something soon and send her something. I think that's what's going to happen. Uh, next door to us was the Island of Mull weavers. And they were selling the Ardalanish yarns. This is an iron weight. And the camera is going to go crazy because it's a black Hebridean. And these sheep live right outside their mill. Hebridean. This skein of yarn saved me my, you know, I was talking about sanity, wool fumes, yarn fumes, but actually sheep skin smell saves my sanity. First of all, the three ladies working there were darlings. I loved having chats and laughter and silliness, but also, oh my God, we're so worn out with them. So I kept going and having sneaky sniffs of this Hebridean. If I had to describe it, it isn't like oily oh, sheep smell. It's the smell of bracken. It's the smell of heather. It's the smell of the sea. It's the smell of mud crusted wellies, but the good kind of mud, no shit involved. <laughs> I don't know, I can't describe it. All I can tell you, and again, getting tearful because I love this scheme. This is my favorite. It is rough as ruggedness. It is beautiful as life. Guys, check them out. And their throws are amazing. They make these amazing woven throws. They make amazing tweed. It, ju it was just beautiful to work alongside them and stand back to back and sometimes sit with them and sometimes laugh with them and just get that nudge of, yeah, we're all in this together. God, I'm going to not talk about this anymore because I love this scheme. But I took this for a walk after I bought it and um, ended up at the Weist stand. So I'm going to I'm going to butcher these names. I'm really sorry, but going to Scottish Yarn Fest, you've got to bring home something. For me, it was this time I do want to bring home Scottishness and Scottish things that make me feel like I've brought a bit of the festival back and the bit that matters. This was from the Ulst stand. I have no tag, I have nothing, I don't even have a bag because it was like a late evening purchase. And this is a bit like Plutti Loppi. See how fine it is? It's the exact other end of the spectrum to my Hebridean. <laughs> that for 
purchases. The light has changed. Oh, my face is dark. Sun has been shining. So I think I've shared all my purchases. I think this was last. Um, that's all of them things from the festival. But then there was uh, the extra event on Saturday which was called Meet the Shepherdess and I absolutely loved it that was my day off I booked a class which happened in the afternoon and before that I booked a ticket for the Meet the Shepherdess diving down to show you what I got I got from the Black Isle yarns this amazing Shetland wool and it's spun very loosely. So this is a small mill that spins this. It looks almost like a hand spun. I bought it a flutter by net. Sorry I've gone blank on your name. And I've been podcasting for a lot of waffle waffle. So I'm going to add in your name down here. Who was working for the lady of Black Isle Yarn. And that was fun. <laughs> because we'd been sort of having chats here and there. And uh, just love your work. Um, so so that was really cool to be able to purchase this of you of all places this will become a cowl or shawl I keep changing my mind especially as I bought a second thing this is new leaf yarns oh, look at that color it's especially alpaca -y good you know since the whole month I'm a bit of a Alpaca girl, I love alpaca, and this is very special alpaca blends. Uh, alpaca and Wednesday day. Alpaca fleece has been kindly provided by Hooch from a small herd in Aberdeenshire and Darcy from Heim Alpacas in Fife. You can find out more about your yarns. I love people who credit the animal. I'm about super citationality. In my zine, I wrote an article about it. I am about this in life. I really don't like people taking the fleece of an animal, not saying that animal gave that fleece. No, I'm not. I'm not that extreme, but I think it's an amazing thing. And when it comes to art, when it comes to knitting, when it comes to creativity, when it comes to science, when it comes to writing, you citate where you get your inspiration from. It's respect. You credit the source. Symbols. I don't know why it's even a question in any world. The internet is just too vast for people to actually take responsibility for their actions. Anyway, tangent. <laughs> what I love about the new leaf yarns is that it is a very, very local and a very, very fresh brand. And I had been longing to see their thing. Actually, I think I bought the tickets especially to see them and had a nice chat and gave my details. So there is a connection made, which I'm very happy. And I, I, I think this will happen together with this amazing blue. I don't know if the baby's show, the baby's mid blueness is shown. Yeah, it is. So the mid blue is mid blue batch one color by hawk shaw sheep which is uh basically a scot scottish spun scottish dyed thing um from the 2017 clip uh wednesday day in hebridine heb is my new love see that's the brand again the tree i hope it shows I loved this. This blue just sort of sang and I think I'm going to make these three into my Saturday. It was on Sunday the event. Oops, sorry I said Saturday. This will be my Sunday shawl. I think that's what's going to happen. Lovely and natural and potentially naturally dyed. I'm not sure what the blue was dyed with. It doesn't say natural or unnatural. Now. 
I've podcasted um, all things that I've bought, apart from the lotions bar that I got at Mulview Yarns. I love Paula and I love Paula Stool. You will see a lot of her stool in the Knit Reportage because, to be honest, I think Paula's was the most beautiful stool. Full stop. It was gorgeous. That woman has got an eye for it and she's got a knack for style and um, <laughs> her partner, I've gone blank on your name, sorry, love you guys. He just said, I take orders, she designs it, she tells me what to do and he did a good job at putting it up and they're just a great team. I love couples where it shows this is a team, they help each other in their ways and everybody does that differently. And Paula's stool was great. I this time bought bergamot and black pepper, pepper organic lotion bar and my hands will thank me for it. There. These were my makes. Now, I was also a very lucky receiver of some gifts, I've told you. And one of them is a huge bag of salty licorice that I got from Lika. That was my first present um, Wednesday evening and I loved it. I was eating licorice and drinking beer and then we went out dancing. Perfect present for, to come from Holland because I love licorice and salty licorice is the best. Lika, I miss you so much. We've just been writing whilst I was recharging the camera and I agree, we need to see each other soon because I miss you. Um, then our teammate colleague, we were hanging up in a threesome quite a lot together with the Hexton from Dolventel as well, but Louisa Anita Duker, she gave me some presents as well. And I was lucky enough that they put me up in their Airbnb in this huge flat. Well, it was it's a huge flat because of a lot of people. We were, I think that night, 11 people staying there. It's a 12 bedroom place, but 12 bed, not 12 bedroom, <laughs> two bedroom, but 12 people. <laughs> we managed and I'm so thankful that I could j jump in because I'd, uh, yeah, failed to get accommodation that night and Oh God, I'm waffling. Anyway, Lika, thank you for the licorice. And Louisa, she gave me something um, for my kids, a book, it, which is the Graflo in Dalek. So I will be reading that to them tomorrow when I see them again. And she gave me this box and I thought oh, it said candle on it. And I was like, oh, thank you for the candle. I didn't unpack it when she was there. I unpacked it and Louisa, there was lots of surprises in there. A look at all these buttons. I love them. I love vintage buttons. It's absolutely. Tell me next time. Tell me you unpack. I want to see what you think. <laughs> Louisa, I absolutely love them. I will talk about buttons in my next episode because now I'm a bit tired and sitting in the hot sun. But Louisa, there is a reason why you giving me buttons means. You know who I am. <laughs> you know that anyway. <laughs> it's a highlight to finally meet. We've known each other for so long. Thank you for my buttons. And thank you for my amazing candle because this was the candle that was in there. Absolutely love it. I think I will keep my stitch markers in it because once this is burned out, I have a lid to put on top of this. Uh, it's a special kind of brown glaze wear that I love and it'll go somewhere really nice that I love and I'm gonna cherish it. It's gonna be my yarn shrine candle. Thank you so much. I love this person. Another person that I met is Lisa and I know Lisa watches my podcast because she told me that she watches it. And I thought it was so kind of you to be so enthusiastic and so caring and that you get me, you know. Some people get me and some people don't, which fair enough, that's life, but Lisa really gets me. So Lika, Louisa and Lisa, the three L's that I got presents from this time, love. So Lisa made a bunch of these amazing needle books and I think I got the prettiest one. Isn't it just beautiful? 
So I'm going to put all my needles in there, into my needle book, and keep it safe. Thank you, Lisa. I love it. I love that you're a cat lady and I'm staying here and there's a cat and I was just like, that's what it must be like to have a cat. Just mounts in the morning and then you give it food and then it goes to sleep. And it's just sleeping and sleeping and sleeping. <laughs> Thank you so much. So Erica Eccles on Instagram, she makes these amazing things. She makes lots of amazing things and it was a complete, utter lovely thing to meet you and to find this present um, that you'd snuck on top of my coffee pot when I was, <laughs> I got coffee at a break, went to the toilet and came back and there was this present by Lisa. And Mareike, she's also a friend from Holland, but she is German. She brought everyone who was staying in that house this little book. A <laughs> crazy math on it. I got one because I stayed there one night. <sighs> I love it. Thank you. The other thing I got was came from the Passio Spinner. It's just a little book with inside. It's, it's, it's all paper. It's great. It's a little pen and these notes. Good. Always need that. And these markers. I think this will be really good. It's, it sort of helps you with a project, I suppose. If you're better organized than me, then you can use these things to, you know, stick down and write things down. And I'm gonna use this. Theresia, I didn't meet last year, but she was um, the one who knitted this scarf. So I was really, really happy to be able to give her one of these mini zines that I made, especially for Edinburgh. I made one with um, photographic covers. This is the Pinga mini zine. I showed it at the front at the beginning, but I'm gonna say it again. And it's basically the story of when I lost my Pinga win last year. I lost it just before going to the plane, and I didn't notice until I was in Berlin that this Pinga win was still in Edinburgh. This cheeky Edinburgh holiday has stayed and went on an adventure <laughs> together with Katrin and Theresia, and they took these pictures. And Theresia thought the Pinga win looked a bit cold and knitted this amazing little shawl from a, from a sock yarn and I think she told me this time that actually she ended up not having enough yarn for the socks for her husband that she was knitting out of this yarn and, and both the toes have a contrast colour now. Oops, <laughs> sorry. And thank you, the shawl is loved. My daughter loves the shawl that goes with it. Um, the pattern for the Pingelwin is by Anna Maltz and you can buy it as a single pattern on Ravelry. This bag is also by Anna Maltz who hand prints these little project bags and this particular project bag belongs to Lady Rovina. I think you said Christine, um, she lives in Sweden and I wanted to give one of these to the Swedish friends that I met to give to her but I will send her one of these because that is her bag. She let me take this picture of them both together. And this picture went around the interwebs and helped me and um, Kathleen connect. Because she then sent a message after seeing this post saying, look who I found. And sent me this photograph of Pinga, who was with her. And this is the story basically re retold um, in a little mini zine which will be available in my Etsy shop. And I think that's about it for presents, apart from a birthday present, a late birthday present. This is the Mokosh by Eula, who I was working for at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. That's how I managed to go, because basically I could fund my travels by working here. Good. It was exciting and Eula, I love your mokosh. The base is super squidgy, soft French merino. It has a matte shine of finish. And this is the one dyed in pomegranate. And I especially love that this skein has got different colors, specks going through it. It's mine, it's all mine. And it's so soft, I can't decide what to do with it, but it'll just I live in my yarn shrine and I'll be happy and super thankful for being able to come here with Eula's help and in the snow I was wearing all of these I'm gonna just put 
these up and flash the names of the designers and the names of the yarns over the top of these. This connects me to my friend, my amazing friend Fran, who I've missed really dearly. One day we'll meet. Oh, maybe do it like that so you don't see the funny on the inside. It's like that. And last, but very much not least. That was a lot of words and flashy things just for you. who's Uta IG and Uta is a really close friend of mine and I forgot to share what I bought at Edinburgh Yarn Festival also by Uta we were selling these so I sort of left it a bit out of the occasion but look at this amazing project bag so Uta uses a remains from her um, sewing and she avocado dyes linen and then she makes these amazing bags. Look inside, it's got this. It's so cool. I'm so happy. I'm especially extra and super happy with this amazing color. overview card. What was EYF? Ha. I'm gonna do that here in this funny position with my combed thunder great arcana cards. Credit the artist. Credit the artist. Sorry. Um, I'm gonna put that out on the sofa and using my left hand what was this EYF? It was the star. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together